Hi there everybody, it's UK independent stamping up demonstrator Halsey here from slimandstylish.stampingup.net. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today I'm playing with two of my elder favourite sets. So these are two sets that have been around for some time. The Celebrate Sunflowers Cling Stamp Set and the Free as a Bird Cling Stamp Set. These are both in the annual catalogues. They were carried over from the previous annual catalogue and I just think they're really cute sets and I haven't played with them for ages. So I got them out today and I have created this card. I actually really like it. It's a busy card, which is unusual for me. Normally I go with white backgrounds, but I do really love it. Let me show you how to put this together. So to start off with, you are going to want a piece of basic Whisper White. It can be any size. You are literally just stamping on this ready to cut out. So this is going to be our fussy cut sheet. So first of all, you want to stamp this stamp once, this one once, and this one here twice from the Celebrate Sunflowers stamp set. So if I just get these out and get them ready to go. Then what you want from the free as a bird stamp set is you want the bird and you want these cute little flowers just here and you want three little flowers and one bird. So let me get some blocks. You want to stamp these in memento because we're gonna be doing some blending and memento is the best ink when you're blending because it stops it from bleeding one into another so if you wanted to know for blocks i'm using two d blocks so that's this really nice size here i often think d block is the best block to have as a stable because you can use it with most stamps then i'm using an e block a c block and i'm going to use a itty bitty oh, a block when i've finished throwing it myself we do have b blocks as well they're the sort of in between size so they all go up in sizes a b and smallest okay memento ink it's somewhere on my desk it wasn't on my desk it was in my lounge so when i did this card last night i sat in my lounge and fussy cut out because I like to do that. I have a little portable sort of lap table. I do my stamping, my blending and my fussy cutting while I'm sitting watching the TV. So uh, I don't have a TV in my craft room. Otherwise, when I'm designing, I put the TV on, then I sit down and then guess what? <laughs> I don't do anything. <laughs> so um, I, I've been very good and I don't put anything on in the craft room other than some music. Um, so that I actually get on with the work I need to be doing because I use this as an office in the week as well for work. So um, I got my memento by the side of the TV, obviously from where I was sat late last night as I was fussy cutting these images out. So these are some delightful stamps. The um, sunflowers, the the flat, um, the bird one's really nice as well, but the sunflowers, there's just so much detail in it. Have a look at these. How much detail is in that? It's just such a beautiful stamp. So for colouring these in, let me just move these all off to the side so they don't get in the way. For colouring these in, I'm doing a lot of colouring recently with Pale Papaya. It's one of our new in colours and I love it. It's a great sort of foundation colour and I really like it. In addition from the new in colours, I've got um soft succulent and i've got fresh freesia and then on top of those colors so those are all our in color family um we've got two other in colors but i'm not using those so for the other colors i've got cajun craze and i have got dark daffodil delight and i have got light so saffron so those are two two different colors that i've mixed together for this okay so first of all i'm using dark cajun craze and i'm putting that through the middle of my sunflower just like that <laughs> really simple that light cajun craze over the top of 
all of it pushing it out and you'll see I go in circles I quite like blending in circles because it picks up some of the dark color spreads it into some of the light but doesn't streak if you go in circles whereas it can streak sometimes if you go in lights and exactly the same on the little sunflower okay petals really really easy you're starting off with the dark pale papaya and i'm literally just going around the outside like that i'm not paying attention to any of the petals i'm just popping that color on like that and exactly the same around the little one sort of giving it a shine there we go okay dark daffodil delight now so this is the darkest of our yellows and i am just popping a bit of that around the edge you're probably wondering what's happened to my nib this is an old daffodil delight um and i used to color my ribbons with them so you can see it's got a bit frayed just take a bit of scissors off and chop it off when you've got time then light pale papaya and this is where i'm going to pay attention to the actual petals and i'm going to draw in not the back ones but the big ones here anything that looks big and prominent is getting colored in And notice I'm not really blending much with the other colours. I'm literally just getting the colour onto the page. Okay. Exactly the same with this one. Playing with the big petals that are at the front. Keep going around. Okay. And then the light, so saffron, using the brush tip. I'm just putting this colour on and I'm going to go over all of the petals and I'm going to blend in. So I'm popping the fine detail at the, to the top to make sure I stay in the lines. And then when I come down the bottom, I'm doing the circle again so that I'm not streaking, but I'm blending all the colours in together and making sure that everything has this so saffron over the top like that. Okay. Really quite simple all blend in quite nicely together I sometimes think that people think it can be quite daunting when they look at a big image and they have to blend it because it's a lot of blending going on um, especially if there's a few different colored pens being used but actually I think the bigger it is and the more colors that you use on it um, the easier it can be because you, you've got more room to sort of make a little mistake and also you've got enough room to get all of the colors on and blended in quite nicely together whereas when you've got a small image it's more um finite i think and also um if it's flowers which predominantly i i seem to generally be blending flowers more than anything else is they're not meant to be perfect you know when you see them in the garden some of them have been in where the sun is some of them have been in the shade they're all different colors you know a caterpillar has put a hole in one of them or something they're not supposed to be perfect flowers so there we go those are the sunflowers so with the soft succulent you just want to use the dark up the middle of these leaves like that and then the light soft succulent just over the top of all of it to give the leaves some dimension okay once you've done that, you want the little petals, so you're using your dark fresh freesia. Oh, if I get the lid off. And I'm using the bullet tip for this just because they're a bit smaller, these flowers. I'm just putting a little squibble in the middle of the dark. 
and then I'm just using the light over the top to colour in like that. Okay, last but not least is my bird. So I have done the bird totally in pale papaya. I think that way it matches with the tones that are in the flowers. So I've just done his his tummy in dark pale papaya and then I'm just going over the whole bird completely in light pale papaya. Okay. And that's all the blending done. Nice and simple. So I'll just move those blends up to the side. You want to spend some time now, fussy cut all of those images out. So there is my bird, my sunflower, my littler sunflower, four petals, sorry, four leaves, because even though they were one stamp, I've cut them out individually. And then I've also got my three tiny little purple flowers. Okay. So once you've done that, you want a piece of basic white. This is 10 centimetres by 14.35 centimetres. So it just has a slight edge around the card. And I'm going to grab a piece of scrap grid paper. Um, just because I'm going to be making a mess stamping off the card and I am using grey granite for this and I'm also using the sentiment thanks a bunch and this is from the celebrate sunflowers set so it's this one here thanks a bunch now I'm going to start at the bottom and line this up because I'm not putting a sentiment on this card sorry I uh I dropped that so I could talk to you. I'm not putting a sentiment on this card because you can see it quite clearly at the bottom. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and get that one that everyone's gonna see perfect first, okay? So line up where you want it. Thanks a bunch. And then what I'm gonna take is the stamp and I'm gonna line the bunch up just over the gap of the thanks like that. And then line the thanks up just over the bunch and keep go into the exact same pattern. Okay, so you can build the card up. The, bent, uh, the bunch goes just over the thanks. And then the thanks goes just over the squiggly bit of the bunch. And you'll notice that it now comes in a different place each time. It's not a set um, pattern, which I think is lovely. Um, where was I going? Yeah, bunch in there. Can't forget this. And thanks over the top of that. It's a really good way of lining it up so it looks pretty much the same each time. If you want to get it perfect, use a stamper artist and do the step technique. But really, this is just so much quicker and there's no you know, real problem with it. Okay, there's my background card piece. This is what's unusual for me. Normally I like things nice and white and crisp at the back. So I've tried something different here and I am genuinely quite happy about it. So now I've got my little finger dauber. I'm just gonna drop that into the gray granite ink and I'm just gonna sponge the sides of the card. This isn't spent, it's supposed to be neat. You can be as messy as you want. You can add as much ink to it as you're doing it. But it's just to give it some grunge and some dimension then when you put it on the back of the card. There we go. 
Okay, so now I've got my card base. I've already pre-scored it, so I'm just gonna fold it and burnish it. And then I'm gonna bring in all my elements. So what I want is a sunflower towards the top. Let me put the card I'm making to the side there so you can see where I'm going. I've got a little block I can just pop on there so it stays shut, it keeps wanting to open. There we go. Right. So I sort of want that towards the centre, towards the top. And I'm going to pop my little green leaves underneath it. So I just want to make sure that once I've put them on, they're all still sitting on top of the card and they're not going off the edge, which they're not. So pull the sunflower off. And you now want your glue dots or you want your snail or any sort of adhesive that you're using. I'm using glue dots. Pick one up. Drop it under the leaf. Put the other leaf on top. we go and there's your sunflower to pop on top of that so I am just going to use some um, roller adhesive for quickness there and pop that over the top okay next up is the trim so I have got the crumb cake twine so you've got the naturals twine um, which I think is lovely and it works really well for this card so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop glue dot sort of there, pop the twine on it, and then I'm just running it around three times. One, two, three. Okay, the little sunflower, that goes on just popped to the side like that. So I'm going to want a dimensional, but I want to pop one at the top of the sunflower, one at the bottom, so that it doesn't sit on top of the twine and it sits either side. Like that. Okay. The bird is going to go in just there so he comes out from the side so I'm just going to want one dimensional underneath his head like that and I'm now going to stick this onto the card because I've put my string on I'm quite happy with where it all is and I'm just going to pop it on mat the card like that Okay, to finish up, I've got the three little flowers. One, two, three. So I'm just going to pop some glue dots on the back of these. One. two, three, and then I am going to add on my gilded gems. So let me just dig in here and find those out. I'm only putting two on just to give it a little bit of bling, but not too much because I feel the card is really busy as it is. And the final touch is just this little ribbon here. I was thinking when I first put it together about putting a thank you sentiment on it, but you could just see it so clearly on the um, background paper that we created 
but I didn't think there was a need for it. And it's okay about the bow being a little bit tangled because it's not a perfect, perfect card. It's not supposed to be. It's more of one of them vintage type look cards. And you just want a little glue dot to stick that down. Just there. Pop it on. And there we go finished card what do you think i really like it it's using the celebrate sunflowers and the free as a bird stamp set everything i have used today is available from my store www.slimandstylish.stampingup.net if you have enjoyed the video please do give me a thumbs up subscribe and pop back for more content thanks for joining me today i'll see you all soon bye i hope you've enjoyed today's project all items that I have used on this video are available to purchase from my store www.slimandstylish.stampingup.net Alternatively, if you would like a copy of our catalogues, please send me an email to slimandstylish at live.co.uk or leave me a comment below and I'll get in touch with you. I upload regular content to this channel, so if you do enjoy watching my tutorials, please make sure that you have subscribed and rang the bell to get notifications when new videos go live. Thank you for joining me and have a lovely day.